take three marker. Marker. Okay, here we go. Action, action. Lost Lake is about a young couple that goes to the desert to find a ghost hunting uncle, Uncle Vern. He's lost in the desert and they want to go out there to bring him back for their wedding. I guess we're here. I reckon so. We get to this town that's just like wasteland, desert, like burnt down houses, shutters, abandoned stores, uh, businesses that are closed and don't look like they've been open since, I don't know, World War II. Somebody's been marking these. Could be recent. Looks kind of like a study of crime. Hey! And uh, when we find my Uncle Vern, he's very different than I remembered him. It was a very big change in him, an evil change. Uncle Vern is split right down the middle. He is uh, Alpha Omega. He is, is Yin Yang. The Uncle Vern that Katie's character grew up with, um, very open, very trusting, very naive, um, very loving and curious. Uh, uh, guy, uh, sensitive, smart, smart. So trusting and naive, however, that he falls into the wrong spider web. And his darker aspects are brought to the forefront by um, Pat McNeely's character. Getting things done. Trying to keep up with developments. To Jeff, to my character Jeff, it's it's very interesting to me that Uncle Vern is out hunting for ghosts. Like that's like that's what my character really latches on to. You don't believe in them even a little? No, no. The fact that other people do, that fascinates me. He thinks it's fascinating. For one, that people believe in ghosts and uh, and f even more than that, that someone is out there, a full a grown man is out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> he's hunting for ghosts. He's, he thinks he's looking for, it's like, it's like Scooby-Doo. Let's go have fun. <laughs> the making of Lost Lake was an amazing adventure. This right here is the darker the better, especially on a slasher film like this. I mean, he should have some blood on his face. Because yeah. he's he stabbed her like this and blood is shot in his face. Dave Claire and I were partners that had a dream. We had little money and really ambitious hopes for our tiny film. It doesn't look like anyone lives here. We found this great town that was mostly abandoned out in the desert near the Mojave. Middle of nowhere, there was probably 40 people still living there. Very industrial, it was a, a chemical plant that you could still smell. Things were just abandoned. Houses were completely abandoned. It was, it was very odd, very eerie. And we thought, this is our set. So we wrote the movie around Trona, California, knowing that it would be like our back lot. Look at these old photos. You could see that it was once a thriving, like happy place, like in the pictures on the walls and you know the, the homes and the people and you, you there was something going on there, and it was a very, it was it was one thing, and then to see it drastically another thing is pretty spooky. And Pat goes first, then Jib. Action. The making of the movie was very difficult, but a lot of fun. For me as the director, it was like directing a movie while being shot out of a cannon. Sort of 13 days of intense focus with a fantastic crew but 13 days to shoot an entire feature film. A lot of work, it was a lot of work, a lot of running, jumping, um, very physical, which I love. I love that, that part of it. I'm kind of a rough around the edges type of girl, so I'm always, always up for that kind of thing. But, um, you know, car chases and with me on foot and Ezra's driving a big truck and inches away from me, it's very intense. <laughs> ready to watch Lost Lake, be prepared to fall in love with the characters, want desperately to help 
help them, and then quickly realize there's nothing you can do. He's coming. I am that Yankee Doodle Ball.